The long division of polynomials, if you watched my last video, I went on a little bit of a belligerent rant about how synthetic division was so much better. And I still stand by my speech. But I will say, synthetic division is really only possible if you're dividing by a polynomial, excuse me, a polynomial whose coefficient is 1. And this one has a coefficient of 2. And this is a, these come up. So like I can't just act like these don't happen in the real world. OK, I retract that statement. Maybe they don't happen in the real world, but they definitely happen in your math class, in your real math class. OK, so basically, it's the same thing. So in, in case you haven't watched the first one, we'll just kind of start over. But synthetic, excuse me, long division is you write this little dude here, OK? You have 2x plus 3. And you're going to do just like you did in the fifth grade, an actual long division problem, this guy. The guy that's getting divided goes on the inside, right? OK, like so. So first step is just to write it out, and you're ready to, ready to go. OK, now there's no difference in doing these long division problems whether or not this first guy has a coefficient. I will admit that it's significantly lamer if you have a coefficient. But if this was just x plus 3 versus 2x plus 3, the process is not different at all. So. I, you know, the, the, the whole like, you know, rationale for how you get an answer is the same. So remember, in, whenever you want to do long division of polynomials, you only look at this first guy here and this first guy here. This drama, this drama, ignored for a millisecond, okay? So look at this, 2x, what would I multiply 2x by to get 2x cubed? Right, that's not that easy, let's be honest, I have to think for a second. Okay, so 2x times what is, two, is 2x cubed? It's going to be x squared, right? So I know that 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. So now that I only looked at this guy and this guy to get this guy, now I have to bring back the whole, I have to actually look at everyone. So I'm going to distribute this x squared to both these dudes. So I have 2x cubed, right, plus 3x squared, okay? So after I determine this value based on looking at him, now I distribute it to both of these guys and write them here. And remember, this is kind of the weird step. Just like normal division, after you multiply this, remember, you're going to actually minus this, right? You're going to minus that value. It's the same thing when you were doing division like, OK, 3 into 69. And you'd say, oh, 2, 2 times 36. And then don't forget, you subtracted it. Like, remember when you were a little kid? So here, you're still subtracting. But it just looks worse. And actually, I don't usually do this little parentheses and subtract. Since I'm pretty slick, I actually do this. Stay with me. I know that the parentheses, that I'm going to have to distribute that negative. So basically, after I multiply these out, just change both signs, right? Multiplying by a negative 1 is the same as changing both sides, right? So now, oh, these magically disappear, which I know they did because I designed it to be that way. Now these ones, 7x squared minus 3x squared is 4x squared. Little side note, if for some reason, and this does happen with these problems, if some reason up here is like 7x squared and down here is 3x, remember, you can only subtract like terms. So if these exponents don't match, just not this problem, but later in your life, then you cannot subtract them. Right? You just write them next to each other. But this one they do, everything's cool. I'm going to carry down this guy plus 2x. I can leave the 9 for now. now Back to my weird logic. Now I'm only going to look at the first guy and the first guy, right? Forget the three, forget everything else. I only look at the first guy and the first guy. What would I multiply 2x by to get 4x squared, OK? And because I'm a nerd, I'll just help you. It's 2x, OK? 2x times 2x is 4x squared. I multiply it to both, so then it's plus 6x, OK? Remember the step that Ryan warned me about. Don't mess this up. Change both signs at that stage, right? Now you add down, gone, magically. Now this is 2x minus 6x, which is a negative 4x. Cool? Now this dude carries down here, the 9 plus 9. Now same thing. What do I multiply first guy to first guy? 2x by to get negative 4x. That's a negative 2. I'm kind of stressing that like my magical plane of air that I ride on. Hopefully I'm not running out of room down here. Because that would be weird if I solved it off into no man's land. So I'll try to write small. Now, 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x minus 6. Negative 2 times 3. OK, if you can't see, just listen and write this on your own page. Change both signs. And I actually end up with this. My 4x's disappear. I'm going to do the math up here. And then I'm left with 15. OK, 9 plus 6 is 15. In case you can see that, I'll write it there too. Now, what do I do now? First guy into first guy. 2x does not go into 15, even on a good day. 
That's the remainder. That's how you know you're done with the problem. So this went into this, x squared plus 2x minus 2, with the remainder of 15. Done. Okay? So don't be afraid of this coefficient. You still have to do the same thing. What do I multiply him by to get him, him by to get him, him by to get him, and the thing will work out. I will say that there's, this is right, okay? But I will say there is a nerdier way to write this answer. And some people say R15, remainder 15, and that's chill. Or another way to do it is, which is kind of like the snob version, is to actually say plus 15 over the original guy, 2x plus 3. Same thing. That is how you represent your remainder. Either way. I mean, it kind of depends on who's your teacher or whatever. So that's how you do long division when this polynomial has a coefficient. And that's it. And remember, if you're having a hard time at your local school, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School, and the credits will be transferred back to you.